Now we have the first issue from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Tuzla is a city in the northeast of Bosnia and Herzegovina, located in the basin of the river of the same name. It is the third largest city in the country and a major industrial center. Tuzla has a charming old town and its real highlight is the Salt Lakes. Our journey to the Tuzlan Canton began with an acquaintance with Tuzla. It is the third largest city in the country. One of the most multicultural cities. My acquaintance with Tuzla began back in Slovenia with the expression, the whole Tuzla milked one goat. As I learned on the spot, a law had long been passed here prohibiting the keeping of goats. They say they destroy too much vegetation. However, one local resident did not listen, left his goat and hid it in the forest. So the goat became famous, people bowed to its feet when milk was needed. They even erected a monument to a goat in the city. Tuzla, like any other city, should be explored slowly. Walking along the streets of its old part, noting for yourself the contrast of the combination of modern and old, Islam and Christianity. Capturing the colors of the streets, stopping at monuments, trying local drinks in cafes and bakeries, which in South Slavic are simply called pakara. Friends, today we are in the northeast of Bosnia and Herzegovina. There is a small town here with a population of 115,000 people. It is called Tuzla. Ancient, interesting in some ways, not very interesting in others, but I can t imagine the possibility of somehow bypassing this city and not telling you about it. Therefore, today we will take a short walk around the central part of the city, I will show you the prices of products. You will see how Bosnians live, how this industrial city lives and develops. In general, as always, I will show everything through a demonstration of the city streets, you will see everything in detail. Look, everything is ahead. And we begin. The city center is full of mosques. The Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina is the only country in the world where the majority of the population, being Slavs, profess the Islamic religion, inherited from Ottoman rule, when the Ottoman Turks imposed their religion on the Balkan Peninsula, simultaneously developing this region. According to the UN Population Division, the population of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2017 was almost 3 and 8 million people. Of these, Bosnians make up 53%, Serbs 31%, Croats 14.5% and other nations about 2%. I decided to show you a little local prices from the bingo supermarket. This is the grocery bag I just bought. There are about 3 kilograms of all sorts of products here. You may be interested in the amount of my spending. If we now convert at the exchange rate of the Bosnian mark to the euro, then here we bought approximately 7.5 euros worth of products. This is what I have now roughly calculated. Let me show you what s in my bag soon. Here is a whole bag of food. In general, for some reason I thought that you would be interested in knowing these prices. After all, a European country, with its own currency, is not part of either the European Union or the Eurozone. Here is the check. I show you now. I try to increase it. The numbers are visible here. And there is a list of goods purchased. You can divide all the numbers by approximately 2 to get the approximate cost in Euros. So. What do we include here? And this is 400 grams of bread. This is this bun with seeds. Very big. Next is the second one. Just over 1 kilogram of bananas. Next we have Gouda cheese. And then 2 jars of poultry pate. 500 grams of nut butter. And finally, the last purchase item is 200 grams of dates. 
Not the best, but what we're in the store. All this together is 14.5 Bosnian marks. Or about 7.5 euros. Or at the dollar exchange rate it is 8 dollars. Immediately to remove all your questions about the currency in Bosnia. I will answer you. Here the Bosnian convertible mark is used as the national currency. Today, the approximate exchange rate for one Bosnian mark is about 55 US cents, or 50 euro cents. Why are Bosnians, Serbs, and Croats belonging to the South Slavic group of peoples divided into three directions in their choice of faith? If Croats and Serbs are Christians, Catholics and Orthodox, and they can somehow be united in one faith, then the Bosnians have chosen a different path, Islam. The Balkans are very unique, as are the neighboring countries in general, speaking the same language to each other. Ahead, I walk the streets of the city, show you prices in local stores and show you the history of this region. So Don T switch. I also forgot to tell you and mention that today is November 7th, 2023. The weather doesn't seem to be very warm anymore. But I have to walk outside in a t-shirt, and I feel pretty fresh and good. And look, this is such a quiet, calm area. There is a lot of greenery here. Yesterday it rained all day and evening and perhaps even all night. The entire area was covered by a cyclone. It is beautiful here, calm and very green. I can breathe well now after the rain. Very good. By the way, this is exactly what the entrances to ordinary Soviet housing, built in the 1960s during the time of Bros Tito, look like. This is an ordinary five-story building, but note that the house has one entrance for all apartments. All floors are equipped with one large staircase. There are 10 apartments on each floor. From the point of view of safety and quick evacuation, this staircase will be overloaded. It is not clear what the architects were guided by. Possibly maximum savings. But it looks interesting. But let us still get to the city center from this suburb of Tuzla. Tuzla is located in the northeastern part of the country in the transition zone between the Dinaric Alps and the Pannonian Plain. The city is located at an altitude of 237 meters above sea level and has a warm temperate continental climate. The surrounding area of Tuzla has been inhabited since ancient times. In the first millennium BC, the Illyrians settled here, then the Celts. This region was later included in the Roman province of Dalmatia. After the collapse of the Roman Empire, Avars settled in these lands for a short time. Tuzla was first mentioned in the 10th century under the name Salines, meaning, Salt City. In the Middle Ages, the settlement flourished thanks to salt mining. At the beginning of the 16th century, the city was subjugated by the Ottomans. Its modern appearance was shaped by the Turks. In the 19th century, Tuzla came under the control of Austria-Hungary, and in 1918 it was included in the future Yugoslavia. The old town is the heart of Tuzla and its most beautiful part. Here you can stroll along the narrow streets, admiring the facades of houses in Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian styles, and also relax and have a snack on the numerous terraces. We started from Freedom Square. Freedom Square is the largest square in Bosnia and Herzegovina, 8,000 square meters. This place is the center of the old city, where historical and cultural monuments of almost all historical eras are located. An archaeological site with very significant Neolithic remains was also discovered here. The central element of the square is a huge fountain in the shape of a bowl for cooking salt. On the north side there is a sculpture symbolizing the medieval Steke K tombstone with ornaments from medieval tombstones carved on marble slabs. There is also a 16th century market or bazaar mosque, a 19th century drinking column and a beautiful neo-baroque house from the Austro-Hungarian era. Thank you.
But now we are approaching the Attic Bayram Bay Mosque. The name Attic was given to this mosque because it is probably the oldest mosque in Tuzla. It also received the name Bayram Bay due to the fact that the Bayram Begov Madrasa was located in front of it, and also because the mosque was probably renovated and maintained as part of the same walk, that is, it was an integral charitable foundation, within the framework of Islamic law. In fact, due to its decorated interiors, it is called the Colorful Mosque. The mosque was built on a small hill measuring 10 by 10 meters and dominates the surrounding area. Before the fire of 1871, it was built of clay with a wooden dome. When it was rebuilt in 1888, it had a dome made of solid materials, but this was quickly replaced with a tiled roof. On the ground floor there are 10 windows made of iron with crossbars. The interior of the mosque is furnished with a variety of furniture. The mosque, like the harem itself, is protected by a stone supporting wall with a concrete slab. Another interesting fact about the Muslim Slavs is interesting here. Despite traditional adherence to Sunni Islam Hanafi school of jurisprudence, a 2012 survey on Bosnia and Herzegovina found that 54% of Muslims in Bosnia and Herzegovina considered themselves simply Muslim, while 38% said they were Sunni Muslims. In fact, the constitution of Bosnia and Herzegovina guarantees freedom of religion which is generally respected throughout the country. As confirmation of this, there is another religious center near the mosque. This is the Catholic Church of Saints Peter and Paul. Let us face it, this is the diocesan church of Saint Toribio Romo. Masses are celebrated in English, Russian, Spanish and Latin using an unusual form of liturgy also known as the traditional Latin Mass. As I said earlier, this region is famous for its salt lakes. And this could not help but attract the population here in the Middle Ages. It is difficult to determine exactly when the Franciscan Christians settled on the salt lakes. They most likely built a monastery here at the end of the 14th century or in the first half of the 15th century. For example, the arrival of the Franciscans is mentioned in 1447. This was the monastery of Saint Mary in the Upper Salts, in other words in Upper Tuzla. The modern building appeared here in the mid-1980s. After many years of delay, the municipal authorities of Tuzla issued permission to build the temple in 1983. Then the construction of a new church began. The first service took place there on Christmas Day 1985. Together with the church, a new monastery complex was built which together with it forms a single architectural ensemble. Well, we go further to the city center. And soon we will pass through the local market. Market and market. At their core, they are all similar. But you can pay attention to the cleanliness or dirtiness of the market, to the population of the country, to the goods that are in demand, as well as to the symbols that a particular city or country sells in its market. These are national flags of the country and partners, badges, and figurines. In a word, what is in demand and reflects the city or country in modern realities.
But then we passed the stand with the American and Bosnian flags. And soon we will have to turn the corner. It is there that the city center opens up, to which we returned. In front of you now is the old Haji Hassan Mosque. The Bazaar Mosque is home to a group of Tuzla's oldest communities and is located in the center of the city of Tuzla. As I said earlier, from 1463 Tuzla became part of the Ottoman Empire, and it was from this time that its current name originates, which comes from the Turkish word Tuz, which means the word, salt. After the departure of the Ottomans in 1878, after 415 years of presence in the Balkans, the city becomes part of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. At the end of the First World War, Tuzla, like all of Bosnia and Herzegovina, was part of the newly created Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes, and since 1929 began to bear a different name, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. But here we are in the center approaching a tragic place. It is directly related to the massacre in Tuzla on May 25, 1995. Remember the memorial stone slab on the facade of the house. First, a brief background. In the 1990 elections, the Social Democrats gained control of the municipality of Tuzla, making it the only municipality in Bosnia where the Nationalist Democratic Action Party, professing Islamism and Bosnian nationalism, was not in power. Despite this, the then mayor of Tuzla declared support for the newly formed Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, a war cabinet was created in the city, and with the outbreak of hostilities, a multinational police and army force was created. At the beginning of the Bosnian Civil War, troops of the Yugoslav People's Army still maintained a garrison in the center of Tuzla and were effectively under siege. On May 15, 1992, Tuzla authorities then agreed to peacefully allow Yugoslav troops to withdraw from the garrison and evacuate to neighboring Serbia. Despite the agreed withdrawal, the convoy evacuating troops was ambushed by Bosnian troops, resulting in more than 100 deaths. After this incident, units of the Republika Srpska Army established artillery positions east of the city. Between 25 and 28 May 1995, Several artillery shells were fired at Tuzla from Republika Srpska army positions approximately 25 kilometers west of Tuzla. On May 25, 1995, the birthday of Marshal Tito and the relay of youth in the former Yugoslavia, in the evening at 21 o'clock in the evening, a high explosive fragmentation shell fired by a 130 mm towed artillery gun detonated in a cafe located in Capia Square. As a result, 71 people were killed and 240 people were injured. All of the victims were civilians and most were between 18 and 25 years old. The mayor of Tuzla, Selim Bislagic, made a statement at the United Nations Security Council in which he called the actions of the Serbs, fascist, and called for, in the name of God and humanity, to finally use force. On May 25th and 26th, NATO carried out airstrikes on ammunition depots of the unrecognized Republika Srpska in Pale after violations of exclusion zones and shelling of UN safe areas. The victims' funerals took place four days later, at 4 o'clock in the morning, to avoid further shelling. The victims were buried together in the Park S military cemetery. You saw a memorial plaque at the place where people died. It says, they don't live here just to live. People don't live here just to die. Here they also die in order to live. And it also added, at this place on May 25, 1995, the Serbian fascist aggressor ended 71 young lives by firing an artillery shell. Read Surah Al-Fatiha and pray, remember this and exhort.
Пойдем где их туда. But while we are walking along the pedestrian central street to Rilaybegova towards the salt lakes of Tuzla and towards the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, I want to return to the moment when these lands passed from the Ottoman Turks back into the possessions of the population living in these places. How did the Slavs regain control of these lands? It is enough to delve into history. And here the Russians play a key role who came to the aid of their Slavic brothers in the struggle for independence against the Ottoman yoke. I mentioned earlier 1878, when the Turks left the Balkans. This is a difficult, difficult year. Then the Russian-Turkish War ended between the Russian Empire and its allied Balkan states, Romania, Serbia and Montenegro, on the one hand, and the Ottoman Empire, on the other. As a result of the war, Romania, Serbia and Montenegro slightly expanded their territories, and the independence of Bulgaria was proclaimed, and Russia included the cities of Kars and Batum, now the Georgian city of Batumi, about which we did an episode earlier on the channel, with adjacent areas, as well as the southern part of Bessarabia. But let us take a walk along these beautiful central streets further to the Orthodox Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In fact, the economic development of the city began in the 17th century, when it became an important center of crafts and administrative center Sanjak Zvornik. This was the name previously given to the administrative units in the Ottoman Empire, the middle one between Ville and Katalik. Among the many buildings built during Ottoman rule, the most valuable is the Taralabeg Mosque, built in the 16th century. But look at these ancient streets, how beautiful it is to walk along them this fall. But let us continue about the history of the city of Tuzla. What happened to this city during the turbulent 20th century? On December 28, 1920, in the village of Hasino, not far from the city, a miners' uprising took place, one of the uprisings of the workers of Bosnia and Herzegovina, prepared by the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. And as you understand, the Soviet labor movement here successfully developed underground. Already during the Second World War, on October 2, 1943, the partisan armed forces of the People's Liberation Army of Yugoslavia liberated Tuzla from the power of the Croatian Ustaches, who closely collaborated with the fascists and the German occupation in general. The city suffered after the events of the Second World War, but was not wiped off the face of the earth. Tuzla is the only city in Bosnia and Herzegovina where the nationalist parties, which were actively coming to power in all corners of the collapsing Yugoslavia, did not win the 1991 elections, although in general the nationalist bloc won in those elections in Bosnia and Herzegovina, receiving 68% of the vote, everything was different in Tuzla, as if people had a presentiment of difficult times. During the Bosnian War from 1992 to 1995, Tuzla was the most defended city in the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina, despite Serb attempts to take control of the city. One of the serious events was the day of May 15, 1992, when the city was shot at by a column of the Yugoslav People's Army by Bosnian militants. Seven infantry fighting vehicles and three armored vehicles were blown up. Fifty-two people were killed that day, and about 200 were wounded. On July 17, 1998, according to the UN, Tuzla was finally declared an open city. But now we reach the city's cathedral. 
This Serbian Orthodox Cathedral is located in a prominent location in the center of Tuzla. It is a large Byzantine-style building with blue domes covering the main dome and towers. Let us go inside. In front of us is the Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When looking at Tuzla from the observation deck at Slana Banya, the cathedral stands out and is clearly visible, while the mosques have a more modest profile. The interior of the church is impressive with colorful icons decorating the walls. The place is well maintained and kept spotlessly clean. After entering, there is a small shop on your right where you can buy candles and religious items. Already in the 21st century, the city faces a number of post-war economic problems. At the beginning of February 2014, rallies began in the city. The cause of the outrage was the closure of large factories and firms. However, the rallies soon turned into riots. As a result, demonstrators were arrested and 17 police officers were injured. The next day, the riots escalated into clashes with the police. On February 7, demonstrators broke through to the city administration building and set it on fire. After this, protesters broke through to the city courthouse. However, after some time, the police went over to the side of the protesters. According to media reports, about a hundred police officers and about 30 protesters were injured that day. And at the end of our walk, we finally came to the salt lakes of the city. There are three lakes here and now they are freely open since the season is already closed. For example, Lake Penan is an artificial lake that is usually used as a recreational spot by both tourists and local residents. The Saline Pannonian lakes located in the heart of Tuzla make it the only city in Europe with salt lakes and beaches in the city center. These are the salty lakes. The water actually tastes a little salty. Just a little, but definitely salty. The total length of the coastline of three lakes with pebble beaches is 1,000 meters, around which there is a resort area with waterfalls, sports and children's playgrounds and numerous cafes. In addition to the pleasures of swimming, it is known that the water of the lakes, 
which are fed from underground sources, also has healing properties, especially for respiratory and rheumatic diseases. And of course, the saltiest European city has its own salt factory, a salt museum, salt street, and salt square with a salt fountain in the old town. For millions of years, the north of today's territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina was covered by the Panok Sea. When the ancient sea dried up several thousand years ago, huge reserves of rock salt remained in its place, which people use to this day. Thus, the entire history of the city is inextricably linked with the extraction of salt, the oldest of all known seasonings. Nevertheless, today, the city of Tuzla is one of the largest industrial centers in Bosnia and Herzegovina, after Sarajevo and Banja Luka. The community is home to many chemical, food, beverage and heavy industry plants. The city is the administrative, cultural, economic and educational center of the canton. Natural resources and rich deposits of mineral and energy raw materials have been and are a decisive factor in economic development in this area. The pre-war economic system in the Tuzla region is characterized by the rapid development of heavy industry and energy as the dominant sectors of the economy. Well, with this we will say goodbye to you. Be sure to rate this video, recommend it to your friends and forward it to each other. This will help the video rank better in YouTube search. Well, as always, leave your comments under the video, be sure to write how you liked or disliked the city of Tuzla, the areas in which we walked in general. Don't forget to watch other videos on my channel. And we will definitely see you in new episodes on the channel soon. Channel soon. Channel.